Hello. It has been... How long has it been since our last episode? A grip. The world ended. And then now it's back. Because we're all vaccinated. Woo! Spit into my mouth, Sam. Yes, Finally, new couch, right new here. digs. Oh yeah, so funny story. I mean, cold Mageddon, that whole thing where Texas froze over, yeah. uh, we lost our house and all of it got destroyed. So now me and Tara live in an apartment. Today, we are watching Battleship. As voted by our patrons on Patreon. Yes. A and very I long time ago, but we're doing it. Yes. And as donated by our good friend, Miles Luna, yes. uh, who you might have seen on the show before. He did also do another show because during quarantine, we wanted to hang out and we played D&D for, mm -hmm. for a stretch there. Which was my first time playing. Uh, and if you want to see that, you can definitely check that out on our other channel, Hot Quest. Yeah, yes. youtube.com slash Hot Quest. Uh, <laughs> we still don't stay on topic. It's actually a lot worse mm -hmm. now because everyone's brains melted. Who has seen Battleship? Of us. I have not. Who has seen Battleship twice in theaters? I've played Battleship. As have I. Welcome once again to Deep Dive. It can be a bit hard to pin down exactly how something like Peter Berg's Battleship comes to be a movie that cost well over $200 million and made back almost $30 million in its first weekend of release domestically. And it's funny to look at what leads up to this movie because Peter Berg was chasing the Dune Whale since 2008. He dropped out in 2009. and. I'm sure you've seen what has happened to that production in the last 12 years, but he, for whatever reason, decided that Hasbro's Battleship was his next film. Do board games really need to be movies? No. No. But this one has Rihanna. About sector one, row four. You sank my plasma ship. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> We've been watching Battleship for like a second. A hot second. I've never seen this before. I've seen it twice. So far, I am pleasantly surprised by how much I'm enjoying it despite everything that could be going against it, like trying to shoehorn this right. in two and a half hours. It's the definition of a popcorn movie. It, it is turn off your brain. And like it, it's, it has the guts to be funny. It almost sounds like somebody wrote a movie called The Beacon Project. Right, According right. to the title treatment and then Hasbro came in and was like, all right, put some pegs in it. Battleship's moment to my recollection was like way before, it was like they announced it and Hasbro's like, we're making a Battleship yeah. movie. And everybody's like, well, that's not gonna work. You know, Disney had done the Pirates of the Caribbean thing. So I was like, I don't know, maybe, but like Pirates of the Caribbean is an interactive ride. Well, this is a like very simple board game. So I was not really convinced about it. Okay, so how does this movie start? They found a Golden Glocks planet, which means the planet that has a similar climate to Earth. First thing they do is violate the Dark Forest Protocol and just immediately say, hey everyone. With a just huge sort of laser that's very aggressive and pointed, it, it, it was sent in all caps and they responded in kind. So we're starting the movie with a burrito heist? Yes. Here it goes. What is he doing up there? Yes. So we have a down in our, his luck protagonist. Yes. And he meets a uh, attractive woman at a bar. Yep. I want a chicken burrito. She goes to a bar, a late night bar, yeah. whose kitchen, which is a microwave, is closed. <laughs> Closing time. She was apparently grumpy about that, which like, 
We've all missed burrito opportunities. It's grumpy. Especially have when some there's standards. a convenience store across the street, which probably Which is also saved. closed? Y yes. You know 7-Elevens when they close? Anyway, so he's like, I will get you a burrito. To the Pink Panther music, which I think is the most that crucial part of perfect. any heist. By this point, obviously, alarms are going off, the police are showing up, he runs across a very crowded street, causes a traffic accident, uh, and then gets tased. He gets tased once yeah. and then makes sure to get his woman the burrito. her burrito. Yeah. No. Old fashioned <laughs> man, I, I like him. He, I don't know why I said that so much. <laughs> I yeah. like him. Taylor Kitsch, he's so good. So that's the first like five minutes of the film. Right. Um, and if the whole movie was that, I'd be down. That was a good intro. Yeah. Okay. I loved it. Okay. I think it well establishes the brothers. Mm -hmm. One debt to society later. We joined the Navy, uh, and he's still kind of an <laughs> idiot. Yeah. I, like, he, me he usually means well. He just doesn't do well. I understand that they're making him remarkably unreliable so that later on when he saves the world, it's great. Right. Nope. But guys, nope. we get it. You're in the yeah. Navy. Step it up a yeah. little. I do appreciate that everyone who is angry with him in this movie is right. You're a very smart individual with very weak character, leadership, and decision-making skills. You're never portrayed as like just hard asses who are giving him a bad time. They're really like, dude, you're so, you're late to everything. You have caused multiple international incidents. I just don't get it, man. You got so much potential. So we've got Alex Hopper, the eponymous battleship, and his brother Stone Hopper. Yeah, yes, just, aptly named. That's, that's just mining equipment. I think Liam Neeson dad is like his the most dad. It's just a beautiful family. <laughs> uh, everyone in this movie is pretty dang good looking. Yeah. Um, and then Todd's there too. You look like Colonel Sanders, actually. He was a handsome man. I would say he's the comedic relief, but like actually it, it, everyone Everybody gets kinda is. Things. So far this movie has impeccable comedic time. He has started a relationship with Burrito Girl, which I'm sorry for reducing her down to that. She's actually a physical therapist in the Navy and a pretty impressive human being. Oh yeah, where they're like, let's talk about disability yeah. and service to your country. And I was like, yeah, it, it's really great. Well, I've never known. I appreciate this movie taking mm. so much time on disability. Yeah. Right. They did actually use some real uh, Navy veterans in this. I know that these movies are made like in conjunction with the Navy. I love that they really have military vets in mm -hmm. here. But like watching that and being like, yeah, we take care of our boys in blue. And, and it's, it's, it's a little weird knowing that like, yes, people who get care, get good care, but not enough people do. But I'm, I'm glad that it is at least authentic in that way. Yes. I don't want to be the guy that asks this question in five minutes. Where's Rihanna? Where in the crud is saying. Rihanna? Yes! yes! There we go. Hey. Ask and answer. The US Navy plays a soccer game against the Japanese Navy. Uh, our main character gets kicked in the face. Oh! The US Navy loses to Japan, and they're about to do the war games, the Rim Pack games. What did you know? RIMPAC is a very real military exercise that is held every two years in Hawaii. Then, aliens, a aliens show, up. show yeah. up. Hong Kong gets destroyed by this alien ship. And crucially, so this, is, this gets like lost in the dialogue, that was their communications ship. So this is something we haven't talked about. Visually, this movie... It's a Transformers movie. Is this Peter Berg making a movie so, as if it was you know, directed by Michael control. Bay? Yes. I, I think so. I cannot shake that feeling. That is exactly what he's Yeah. Doing. I mean, the color of the water alone it's, is so Michael Bay. And the uh, Americans toot their low horn. They're like, dude, dude. And the warning. aliens go, yeah. Yeah. Rihanna has shown up. She's delightful. Are we just ignoring the fact that Rihanna has a Vulcan mini? I'm, right, yeah. I'm trying to hold it together. Oh, she says a lot of what I think the audience is thinking about our main character, which is very nice, to kind of have an yeah. outlet. She's the soldier that has it together. They do a really good job of showing the geography yeah. of mm -hmm. these, like, you know, in a featureless 
ocean. It's been a minute since I've played Battleship and like how the heck are you gonna make two and a half hours out of this? But the way that they slowly kind of unfurl it is pretty cool because it's yeah. it's the bubble that forms the shield that forms the this. They've created this like shield, like this Gungan shield tone <laughs> around Hawaii. Do you forget this is a Battleship movie? Like in terms of like the board game? Right. And then when they launch all their missiles, they're like little pegs and they they stick into the ships yeah, before just... exploding. This movie costs like $200 million and it looks like it. Uh, the Scars Guard mm. is very good right up until he gets it pegged did, um... in front of his brother. And, he did uh, that. We... No to that. No? I'm Am not I... okay with it. You're not okay with me saying Scars Guard gets pegged in front of his brother. Um, so, all right. You saved can we, can me. Can we reboot, Elisa? <laughs> There's a whole storyline of these scientists who sent out the signal. He gets called up when they realize that the aliens are back. I understand that we had telecommunications like in 2012, uh, but there's this very prophetic moment where, you know, he gets this moment of like, we should call NASA, and it pans to the entire just, NASA. just NASA looking at the camera. Oh. oh, we should probably call the Air Force. They're there too. It is actually a really funny moment that hits way yeah. better now. So it took a lot of pegs to sink this one scars guard. You're gonna be great on big little eyes. So let's, Let's see what happens next. Wait, did I get you? Ah, I, I missed. Know. I don't Damn even it. Have, yeah. No. Ouch. To be continued. Act two, baby. So remember that time when we thought that the movie started off in like a, just kind of like a lighthearted and you know, just a mild <laughs> burrito heist, you know. It got yeah. real. Where's the captain? They're dead. It got really, real, really fast. He's next full senior. You are. So now Hopper is in charge. Yay! This is sort of an insurmountable problem. So I've never been in charge before, but now yeah. I have to fight alien. I never asked to be squad leader. Obviously, dude is in shock. His brother just died. He immediately just wants to like Ramstein the uh, alien vessel. Cooler heads prevail and he turns the ship away in order to rescue the sailors from the other ships that got hit. You got pegged, dog. <laughs> He takes a little convincing, more than I was comfortable with. Sailors in the water. Get the guns online and we're gonna ram this thing. What? Do How is do that them? your like problem solving tactic? Like no, there's people in the water. We should right. go get them. We yeah. should go get them. Hey, and bud. he's like, no, hey, I gotta ram this spaceship. The Japanese naval officers are now on the ship with the Americans and uh, they have to try to figure out what to do because they've lost pretty much all forms of communication. Because of the bubble. As this whole thing is happening, life on the island is still happening. They start attacking different parts of the island with these, what you pointed <laughs> out. Whoa. Yeah, this is Beyblades. Oh my God. <laughs> Wait, does Hasbro own Beyblades? Missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. opportunity. But it seems to be taking out mostly bridges and infrastructure. Yeah. The aliens are not targeting humans unless they become active threats. Dog, pig, dog, pig, pig, dog, loaf of bread. Along with this, we also have the physical therapist. The physical therapist and her patient. Yes. And they're going for a hike mm -hmm. for physical therapy reasons. And then of course, aliens happen. <laughs> They run across a scientist from the observatories. Our perpetually freaked out <laughs> scientist. He's really very useless. He's a and lot. I'm, he's a lot and he's not doing a lot. He has like big Jurassic Park scientist yes. energy where like he ignores all actual problems. So I guess the information they, they pass along is that the aliens are trying to use the satellite, which mm -hmm. will be in position in four hours. Right. So throughout the game, uh, throughout the game, uh, throughout the, uh, It is pretty much a video game cutscene at this point. Th throughout the movie, they kind of gloss over how they actually found it, but they look at uh, one of the aliens in their armor. This is very Anthem energy, wow. They shock it open with by shining a flashlight uh, in its eyes. So it freaks out, Taylor Kitsch gets mind melded, he sees 
what I assume was like all the previous yeah, conquests. The My theory for what that's worth is that once they got the message from Earth, they wanted to attack us before they we attacked them. Kitch uh, leads the alien uh, outside, gets well, thrown. <laughs> which is basically every scene Taylor Kitch is in. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. If we just like, run through it, dude has gotten kicked in the head, been in the direct path of a foghorn that can break military grade glass. Right. He's gotten thrown against multiple bulkheads. He's gotten mind melded. He leads uh, the alien into the gun sights of a turret, and Rihanna yeah. drops the best line in the movie. A hollow motherfucker. Oh! <laughs> she did say a hollow motherfucker. You're doing an action movie in Hawaii. I do need a Mahalo motherfucker. And it, yeah. And I got it. it it's a cool shot too. It is very, you know, dot is this. Also, I think the aliens are a really cool design. I love very their armor. Cool We've talked about Bioware a bunch on the couch because it looks yeah. like Mass Effect. It looks like Anthem. It mm -hmm. looks like uh, we mentioned Dead Space. There's yeah. a lot of video game influence, which is 100% our jam. Ship design is bananas. It is, it bunny hops around the ocean. It's so cool. In the meantime though, everybody's fighting these aliens. So far the humans are losing so bad. And they figure out that they are probably sensitive to this. The captain of the Navy comes up with something that I think is super fun and cool. They turn this fight into battleship. Into battleship. Into battleship. So they use the actual tsunami detection system from Hawaii to check for uh, water displacement, displacement of yeah. buoys, basically, and they can tell like sort of where the aliens are. Kudos to that writer room. They got together and had to figure out how to make all of the elements, the key elements of the game oh, show a board up. game. It worked it, for me. It worked for me too, because they don't just yell like F7, no. they actually use the NATO alphabet. There is somebody on the deck that will scream like, it's a miss, it's a, it's a hit, <laughs> and, which is very charming. Negative to it's a miss. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Guys, I love this movie. They take down three of the alien ships, but the big Beyblades come out of nowhere and just chew right through yeah, the Jean-Paul Gaultier. One of them goes like... There's this pretty impressive sequence. It's yeah, way it's more obvious. Yeah, it's a series of winners, but... Yeah, it's not 1917, pretty, but it is it is like... It's a pretty thrilling sequence. Which is also sequence. digitally stitched together, so... Absolutely. You see this just beautiful destruction, which is the whole tenet of... Uh, yeah, you're going to this movie to these see movies. explosions. But... Um, we, we, we cannot leave without mentioning that you may have seen our, our, our previous gushing about Rihanna in the uh, Valyrian video. Considering that Valyrian came after, well after yeah. this, I'm kind of more angry about yeah. Valyrian because I, she's in like the whole thing. She's she, in the whole movie. Yeah, she, she's a, a prominent character throughout most of the movie thus far. Get up! Let's go! So Rihanna has saved three different people yeah. so far. Which and she seems to be the best with uh, the large weapons. She should be the captain. I'm actually really impressed with the acting of this movie overall. They are clearly taking it very, very seriously. And in fact, Ordi, I thought he had this really amazing moment. He is like in tears and has no idea what to do. Man, this guy's acting yeah. is phenomenal. So I really enjoying it. I, we are at a, such a low point in the movie that I know that it can kind of only go up mm -hmm. and that makes me more excited to watch the movie. Yeah, it's really, it's just really weird because did not expect any of this level of quality. You know, as we watch this movie, we realize this is fun, it's serviceable. There's no reason it should have been like a box office bomb. Um, it did, come out the same weekend 
as a little indie film known as Marvel's The Avengers. Oh no! I didn't know that it was the same exact weekend? Exact same week. Oh. Um, Can uh, I say something pretty, pretty, uh, a little spicy? Always. This movie shot better than Avengers. Woo. So anyway, yeah, they lost their boat and all the heroes are in the water. Yeah, and, and that's so where we are. they know that they have to destroy the communications array, the same one that sent out the original signal, right. because the aliens are trying to hijack that signal to call for reinforcements. And if they do, who knows how many more are coming? Uh, Twelve. Twelve. Get ready for Act 12. <laughs> Obviously, for a deep dive, we could not do this without Oreos. Oreos for snack time. So we got the Lady Gaga Oreos. As everyone asked us multiple times. Yes. These are uh, cookies inspired specifically by the Chromatica sort of era of Gaga. Oh, that's pretty. They have a really nice printing on them. OK, here we go. <laughs> ready? Cheers. Pause Cheers. up. I'm, just, I'm getting a lot of vanilla cream. It's pink and green, so it's like visually a little unsettling to eat, but I am a Nickelodeon kid, so. Give it a 10 for me. Mm. They're definitely like just the vanilla Oreos, like the yeah. golden mm -hmm. Oreos. Yeah. But they taste a little bit more like food dye. Pretty um, good Oreo. Yeah, they're fine. They're cute. I like them. Did I win or did you win? Oh, I think, I think you won. You hit, you hit my scars guard. <laughs> so we finished Battleship. Battleship! Uh, and I had a great time. Yeah! I had a good time watching it. I think it takes you on an emotional arc that I was mm -hmm. not expecting. I respect how bonkers this movie was. Also, like, both respectful to the source material, the game, and then respectful to the source material of the game, which is naval combat. We started this act. Our human characters. They're have, just on this dingy little Yeah, they are, they're on dingy. a lifeboat because um, uh, their ship got sunk. There's no hope. There's no hope, but we're, we don't have any ships left. We don't have any ships. We have one. A battleship. We've got a battleship. Hey, you said the thing. They decide to steal the USS Missouri, which has <laughs> not gone anywhere in 70 years. 70 years. They just chop the anchor off and they're like, we're taking this out, baby. Let's go, joyride. So they joyride and or Tokyo Drift. Dude, did you just drift a battleship? He's drifting. He's drifting. He's drifting. The USS That's Missouri. Dope. Sorry, this is the best movie ever. I know this is not feasible, but it looks good. Oh, not before. I can't not smile. Not before recruiting a bunch of the veterans oh, yeah. that were yeah, honored yeah, yeah. in the ceremony previously. Why are you guys all posing they're, they're here? All there. They're still just there, yeah, posing they're, they're like they're, they're on an album cover. Like absolute badasses. Is everyone all right? Yes, sir. Well, except for the many, many people who died. They also find artillery just Boy. around. They, it, it is the best like hand wave of like, where did you find World War II yeah. era artillery? And they're like, we couldn't find much. That's not an answer. Yeah. I don't know. I found it really interesting that at the end, you've got an American captain mm -hmm. co-captaining with a Japanese captain of a ship that like served at Iwo Jima. Right, like that, in they, Pearl Harbor. Exactly. Um, at the satellite center, Yes. In the meantime, we have Sam, our physical therapist, oh, right. and Mick basically trying to escape. At one point, they're driving around in a Jeep trying to get a Jeep into lower Earth orbit. No! And they're, they're basically trying to figure out a way to disrupt the activities of the aliens that are there that are trying to set up the satellite communications. Yes. Mick gets into a great fight with the alien. Okay. Whoa. Because these aliens are super sensitive to light, it makes it a more of a, you know, kind of a cool battle between the two of them. I think my favorite scene in the movie was that quiet scene with Sam and the disabled veteran yeah. in the car where they're like, oh no, because there's an alien like right there. Yeah. And He's been having self-doubt the whole movie, something I definitely understand with disability, but he's like, I got this. 
Yes. Yes, yes, you do. And I was like, hell yeah, yeah, you, yeah are. you are. <laughs> hell yeah, you are. Yo. This is the one that takes five pigs. I feel like his plan even this time is let's ram it. They take out most of the alien ship. Yeah. Enough to break the barrier. They make the Beyblades. Oh no. Oh, that's cool. Oh. They make them. Yeah, yeah hot and fresh out of the kitchen. Just how I like my Beyblades. And um, send them out. This, these are them. Oh, same thing. Beyblades. They send them um, out. Everybody uh, on board is like, well, this is it, guys. We gonna die. We did our best. The USS Missouri fires one last shot, the one that was hand delivered to uh, this mm -hmm. other turret. Bench. It does a lot of damage. Because um, they're thousand pound shells. Yes, they are thousand pound shells, which becomes important when six people decide to carry one. This round is over a thousand pounds. How do you expect this to get it there? <laughs> Just when the final three Beyblades are about to hit our heroes, the airplanes come in mm -hmm. uh, and shoot them all down, and it's all wonderful and good. The wiki is very specific about this. Those are uh, Australian F-16s. <laughs> and then it's just kind of done. Like, they just, yeah. we just it's, oh, it is immediately- Oh, there's no cleanup, there's nothing. They're cut just to like... the ceremony. Oh, we're just done? Just yeah, wait, yeah, cut to. It, it, you know, it, it doesn't overstay its welcome. We're in the, you know, the New Hope award ceremony there at the yeah. end. They're just like, we killed them, we did it. Let's go eat chicken burritos, which is how every movie should end, honestly. I think so too. Overall, I really enjoyed it. I thought visually it was very, very fun to watch. I think it's very silly, which is what you kind of need. If you just want a movie to like see some cool stuff and have fun watching, I 100%. I think this is a good movie for that. At no point is it truly bad. It's no. just kind of, at worst, it's bland. We got an almost full two hour run of beautiful water. Beautiful people. Rihanna being a badass. I liked it. I thought it was, I thought it was a good way to spend a Saturday. And finally we're back. I would call it an A1 movie. I'll try, I'll try that. Just keep, just keep, <laughs> just keep rolling. I would call that... <laughs> a hit. Powerful, guys. <laughs> now that we've finished our battleship adventure, it is time to get back to voting, and I am the one who put together this deep dive box. All right. The first one we have is... Ghost, Ghost Rider. Rider. This is Nick Cage? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is actually sent to us by one of our viewers to our P.O. Box. Uh, thank you, Jeff Good. Right. The next movie, let's see. It is, oh, Air Aragon? Oh. Aragon. Aragon. Oh, Aragon. I like dragons. Uh, Aragon. Aragon. <laughs> our next movie is Clash of the Titans. I went to the film set in the Canary Islands. That's the only reason it's in the box, okay. but also, I don't know, it's like God's fighting thing, so that's cool. Oh. Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. This looks, it looked really charming um, The theme was, I got sad every time you pulled out of me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> my theme was punishment. If you want to vote on uh, which of these four we'll be watching, check out our Patreon here. Mm -hmm. If you want to send us bad movies, you can also send them to our P.O. Box, and they may end up in one of our host curated boxes to be voted on. Put your votes in and we'll see you next time on Deep Dive.